Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda, and today we're here at NMRA Spring Break Shootout with the Silver Bullet. It's been a long week getting ready for this event here in Bradenton, Florida. Scott, tell us how things went. Well, like you said, it was a long week uh, getting here. New combination. Thanks, Brett Barber, for hooking us up with the short block. Uh, Edelbrock with the supercharger. We had the housing ported. Right. Uh, we need a new rota rotor pack assembly. Didn't find out that problem till Thursday. <laughs> of course, they next aired us in a rotor pack. Jamie Bell, our technician, scrambled, got it together, um, came in at 9 o'clock in the morning. We were on the dyno. Uh, thankfully, we worked with good people like John Lund uh, with Lund Tuning. And my goodness, it took them one revision, and we're making pulls to 8,000 RPMs. Made decent power, started chugging some belts. We got real aggressive with that pulley size. But hey, we loaded up, and about a quarter after two, we head south on Friday to come down here to. Uh, Beautiful range in Florida for uh, the NMRA Spring Break Shootout. So, otherwise, once we arrived here, we got settled in and then came out Saturday morning for a couple test hits. Uh, very first pass with a new combination uh, went in 852, which was amazing. We were super excited about that. And then second hit, we went uh, 846 at 162, hanging the front tires in the air about three feet. feet. Went like a one. 23 short time with the back tires, which is absolutely insane. Um, possibly could have been even in the high teens if we kept the front end down, but right. once again, new combo. I always tell people keep the front loose so you know the track's hooking, and that it was. solutions making that horsepower that was on the back tire 123 Woohoo! 123 four on the back tire 846 we're two hundredths away from the Edelbrock world record at 162 miles an hour you want to talk about mint that was freaking mint baby oh yeah I mean Scott I've never seen the silver bullet do any kind of wheelie like that that was insane to see i mean we were taking pictures of it and getting video and i mean that you held it and did you ever get out of the gas oh heck no worst <laughs> thing you can do when you're hanging the front wheels in the air is get out of the gas it's going to come crashing down and tear up your front struts possibly with these plastic oil pans i mean that would have been a quick end of the weekend oh that's true so you kind of just try to play the angle make sure it's going to eventually stop pulling up and then yeah you just stay in the loud pedal and it'll settle down nice and easy and uh it was super cool, so uh, it was awesome. A lot of good pictures of it, so. So those were our test passes. Uh, what happened later in the day, you did the 30-mile cruise yep. with True Street. Did the 30-mile cruise with Dave Page from uh, Edelbrock. That was awesome. Got to talk about all the events, the partnership, how we're giving away an Edelbrock supercharger that you guys can register on Steeda.com and win uh, from now till the Mustang week at the end of July. So did the 30-mile cruise, came back, uh, iced down the intercooler, and, uh, on the first hit, we tried to settle down that launch a little bit, and we were in the far right lane, which means, shoot, probably 60 cars went down that left lane prior to us, and it went a 122 short time, which was awesome. I mean, anybody that's ever run True Street knows that you've got 125 cars in that class. There is no prepping of the track whatsoever in between passes. So 
To do that in true street form really shows you how good that seated suspension's working. For sure. How good the Lund tune in Edelbrock and uh, all that horsepower from Brett Barber. And on that note with the Edelbrock Q&A, stay tuned to our channel because we will be posting the raw uncut conversation between Scott and David at Edelbrock inside the car during that true street cruise because there's a ton of great technical knowledge in that conversation. Scott, tell us a little bit more about the rest of the passes. So yeah, so we started with that 852 with the 122 short time, which was awesome. Uh, Second pass, I might have jinxed myself talking to some friends in the staging lanes, talking about how it's never spun the tires with the <laughs> blower on it. Uh, pull up to the line for that second pass, all I see is concrete. Try to come way to the center. I started chattering the tires. I stayed in it. It started getting loose when the back end felt like it was going to come around me. I got out of the gas, pedaled it. Usually you don't get back on it, but this is a competition. Stood back on it. Only went at 966, about 149 miles an hour. So then we got to play the game, right? True Street's all about the quickest average at different time intervals. So with the 966 and the 852, it told us that if we went an 881 with a one, it'd be a perfect nine second average. So that would be sure. good. So talked to a couple bracket racers, deep staged the car, knew that add about a tenth of a second to it. So deep staged the car for the third and final pass, got off the loud pedal about a thousand feet, tapped the brakes. It actually went through at an eight, 84, which gave us a whopping 9.010 average, which would have locked up the victory in the nine second class for True Street. And ultimately what happened? Can we talk about it? Do you want me to talk about it? We'll talk about it. So apparently with the new NHRA rules, uh, they allowed 14 and newer Mustangs to right. be able to go faster, as fast as 9.0 before needing a roll cage. Um, Obviously the silver car has been faster than that. But when we went through tech, they informed us because of our Watts and racing, six point bolt in cage and our safety craft five point seat belts that we actually had to slow down to a 10.0. Right. So you might be scratching your heads. Why does that make any sense? Well, their theory behind it is that the cage is impeding the airbags from coming out. I get that, but when the technical director tells me, Scott, go to the pits, take out that cage, take out those five point harnesses, put in your factory seats, and then you can go a second faster. To me, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. This car has been 160 miles an hour. Safety is at everybody's priority. Um, I even asked if I could make license runs. I've had a competition license since 07. Um, Fox Valley's ran single digits, digits for almost two decades. So I get it. Um, I would never be in this car if I didn't feel it was completely safe. It always goes straight as an arrow. So uh, that kind of stinks. So we ended up being disqualified. They handed it over to a 907. But at the end of the day, there's 125 cars at True Street. It's an awesome class. And that's what this is. It's a street car. It's why we got a bolt-in cage. It's why we got AC. It's why we got a stereo system. Right. We can gut it. We can make it a tin can. It can go really, really fast. But our theory at CETA has always been to build something that you guys, the consumers, can relate to. You come up to it all the time. I mean, let's face it, the car was mobbed with people all weekend, and they're just like, wow, I can't believe it. This is a street car. Well, yeah, it's a street car. We want you to be able to relate to it. So I get it, but I have 125 cars. Steeda Silver Bullet actually had the fourth quickest average overall. Uh, I like to be dancing out there with them today. In fact, this is the spring break shootout class going behind us right now, uh, where we would have qualified number four. Now, we wouldn't have had anything for Mike and Larry at the top of the field uh, running into the seven second zone, but yeah, for sure. hey, heads up racing is heads up racing. Uh, I, okay, there goes Mike on point right now. <laughs> uh, it's super cool. You never know what's going to happen. There could be tire shake. There could be somebody spinning, but uh, at the end of the day, we wish we were out here racing on Sunday. Unfortunately, NMRA and NHRA had uh, other plans for us. Hey, yeah, man. I mean, Scott, at the end of the day, rules are rules. I get it. We understand. It sucks, but... Uh, Gotta follow the rules, right? And and rules are fluid. Yeah. Things change. Yeah. Yeah. It totally depends. I mean, True Street was one of those classes where usually, let's face it, it's a new combo. No test passes. Our first test pass was Saturday morning. Did we think the car would go faster? Yeah, we thought it would go faster, but there's always been this one race waiver at NMRA that just wasn't granted this year. Um, at the end of the day, as a driver, I feel more confident with a cage in the car and with a five point racing harness than with factory airbags. You know, airbags aren't gonna do much if we go into that wall at a buck 62, but it is what it is. 
Uh, on the positive side of things, we are within two hundredths of the Edelbrock supercharger record. Because let's face it, guys, this is a 2.65 liter blower that you can right. win for your car. So uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to pack up our bags. We're going to head back up to South Georgia. And we're going to do it at SGMP. So exactly. uh, it's going to be fun. And uh, keep an eye out for that. And Let's talk about some of the other racers we've had here. Yes. Um, Matt Ballard, for example, he's running the new 860 class, right? Yes. Matt Ballard, super cool guy, full steel suspension. Uh, he's got a BL fabrication turbo kit on it. Um, Kevin Mullen, short block on it. Number one qualifier in the new uh, Suncoast 860 class. So that's, wow. that's super cool. Uh, we'll have to continue watching the racing and, and see how he fares today. Um, in addition to that, Letitia Hughes was also in the 860 class, right? Yes, Letitia Hughes, who helped found the uh, 860 class, a uh, huge state of supporter of ours. Uh, we've been on board with her since the beginning of her program. And unfortunately, uh, when we got here, I mean, Peyton late Friday night, um, we need a place to park the trailer. So shouts out, they let us park the trailer over in their camp. And uh, man, they were elbows deep in that transmission in the Suncoast trailer. Uh, Apparently she had some clutch issues with the transmission, the 10R80. So uh, Matt actually had hands deep in there and Rick, and they were all trying to rebuild that transmission. Unfortunately, I think she had some computer issues and uh, I think she said that uh, transmission wasn't able to get fixed here, which is a, a tough break. But unfortunately at the end of the day, that's racing. She's had tremendous success over the last year, winning five races in five different sanctioning bodies. That is super hard to do, but uh, you know what? Racing's racing. You're going to have your highs, you're going to have your lows. For Unfortunately, sure. this is one of those weekends for her, but there ain't a doubt in our mind she's going to come back stronger and better than ever. I mean, she showed the potential of her combination shutting down to an 869 uh, earlier in testing uh, before she heard that transmission. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, and the transmission's a hot topic with these 10 or 80 cars, especially when you're putting out power like this. We've yeah. learned that. I mean, Midnight said, how many passes should we get on this combo? A dozen. The guys at Suncoast said maybe 50. That's a pretty big difference. Um, we're going to continue pushing the envelope. But like we said at the end of the day, the reason why we started this project early in 2018 is to push the limits. Try to find what you need to do, what works, what doesn't work. How do we get through some of these hiccups? I mean, we can take it back to 2015 with the red, sorry, the yellow car, right. our road race car. First thing we do, get that car from the dealership, stick a GoPro on it, see what the suspension's doing, right? right. Let's figure out What's wrong with this car? How do we make it better? Because at the end of the day, you, the consumer, you're going to win every time. For sure. So is there anything else you'd like to add, Scott? I mean, it's been it's been an interesting weekend. We've learned a lot. Yeah, so highs, <laughs> lows. We've got highs. We've got lows. Uh, I was a little uh, salty last night um, when we didn't get that, that win, although there was some chatter amongst the pits that, uh, you know, we were going to be DQ'd. Um, unfortunately, that's what happened. But you know what? Anytime you can have a car come out, first couple licks with it, go over two tenths quicker, two and a half tenths basically oh, quicker sure. than it's ever been. Um, and you get that big power wheelie, you know. <laughs> Talking with John Lund, he's like, man, you got to tame down that wheelie. I'm like, yeah, but it's so much fun. It's so, so if we had a hit this morning, which we were hoping for, I promised David Page from Edelbrock, we would have reset that Edelbrock record. We would have tamed down the front end on the car, gone quicker to 60 feet. and. I think it would have gotten us that eight, uh, 8.30 that we're looking for, but uh, stay tuned. We'll make it happen. All right, none of this would be possible. We're out here at the NMRA Spring Break Shootout without the help from our great friends at Nitto Tire. We've got a long standing relationship with them. Glenn and Dario, Tomo, all the guys yep. out there. It's been fantastic. We appreciate the hospitality. You're welcome. Letting us pit with them. You guys know they got a great street tire and you know what? Great products, truck tires, you name it. You can find all of it at Steeda.com. But Ronnie, thanks for your hospitality. You're very welcome. We really, really do appreciate it. So uh, guys, remember speed matters and you know tires. It's no doubt been an interesting week and weekend here at the Spring Break Shootout in Bradenton, Florida. Scott, how many years have you been doing this? This is my 22nd year in a row of running this race. It's my favorite race. Love coming down here, seeing old faces, all the guys from back home. Uh, there's no place like it. And uh, like I said, some highs, some lows. Wish it would have turned out a little differently, but uh, you know what? At the end of the day, we value all of our partnerships, all these names on the doors. And uh, you know what? We'll continue to keep pushing the envelope. 
As you guys may already know, if not, we are giving away an Edelbrock supercharger for your 2011 plus Mustang in stage two or 2011 plus F-150 in stage one. If you want to enter, go ahead and visit us at Steeda.com for your chance to win. We'll be announcing the winner of the giveaway at Mustang Week in Myrtle Beach this summer. Go ahead and comment below. Let us know your thoughts. We're really curious what more you want to see with the Silver Bullet, NMRA, and the Edelbrock Supercharger, all these awesome things that are going on here at Steeda. The giveaway as well. Let us know if you ventured and uh, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing. Speed matters.